Shalom everyone, and this weekly parasha, parasha Tzav, uh, can be found in the book of Vaikra, Leviticus chapter 6, verse 1. And this parasha, if you just read the text, it's not very exciting. It's speaking about, again, like the previous one, and a few more uh, to come. It's about the uh, offerings that were brought in the temple. Uh, however, what's the implication to us? And here is one of the greatest uh, I, uh, secrets of them all, which is the secret of happiness. Everybody wants to be happy. People are really searching for happiness for millennia. They're trying to uh, search, running around the world, uh, inventing all kinds of methods of making them happy either food, uh, luxury housing, uh, consuming all kinds of jewels and stuff. There's no end to it. Music, uh, religion. There's so many, many uh, directions in which humanity is trying so hard to find its way to happiness. However, Parashat Sav is very much into the idea of what are the secrets of achieving happiness. And let us start with, we're going to get a list of them right uh, today that are all into Parashat Sav. And first of all, the name of the Parashat Sav means order, command. And I know that most people today have kind of difficulties with commandments. Like who who wants to be under commandments? Who wants to be under anything of do's and do not do's? People want, people see uh, happiness together with freedom. Freedom and happiness go together. It's impossible to be happy when you're not really free. So here, uh, Parashat Sav, is getting us the connection between freedom, happiness, and what are the basic rules that a human being must follow in order to gain happiness. To gain, I'm saying, not just to receive, because whoever studies Kabbalah for a while knows that you cannot force people to be happy. You cannot force people to be excited about life. They need to do it on their own. Happiness is a work. Happiness is an achievement. Happiness is something that has to be acquired. Happiness does not fall from the sky. And it's not something you get in the lottery. It's not something that just happens just because. And if it does, it doesn't last. Why? Uh, the secret is very simple. In the beginning, when the heaven and the earth were created, when humanity was created, and we were created in the image of God, and that means that the image of a creator or the creator is impressed within each one of us, that means that in order for us to fulfill our calling, we need to connect to that creator, the image of creator within us. And that means... Three things. A, the creator is independent. Uh, his existence is not dependent on anything. And his being is not dependent on anything. And we can't stand when we are dependent. So when our existence is dependent and our happiness is dependent on money, health, anything, all the lists that people really make for themselves during their lives of education, growth, uh, growing up, maturity, whatever. And either you get it at home, you get it in school, you get it from others, you see, you try to imitate. You cannot be happy while you are addicted or dependent on other, other causes outside of you. So if you think that you're going to be happy when you're running after a house that you dream about, a job that you're dreaming about, 
uh, money that you're dreaming about, all of that stuff, that's not going to satisfy you. So uh, uh, just, just this week, or lately, I think it was a few weeks ago, uh, it, it was published by uh, Bristol University, a, a research that started in 2018, and that research was about what creates happiness. And uh, the results of this research, and you can uh, Google it, you can find it on the internet, uh, University Bristol University, and uh, happiness, the course of happiness, the course for happiness, they ran a special course uh, of teaching students how to be happy. And they came out with the same conclusions as the Zohar, but not as deep as the Zohar, because what can we do? It's like the Zohar is much deeper wisdom, and this is a very young research. But the conclusions are that you cannot just you can be happy momentarily when you achieve certain things, when you study certain things, when you think certain way, but you need to maintain it, you need to acquire it, you need to have a buildup of your abilities to achieve happiness. So let us describe what the Zohar is teaching us uh, how to be happy, and that's in Parashat Sab. And first of all, as we said, you need to be connected to the image of the creator within yourself. And that means you cannot wait for happiness to come from other people's recognition or any kind of external achievements. Happiness is something that you generate inside yourself. And that means, and that brings us to the second aspect of being the image of a creator. So yeah, you need to be independent, but creativity. Happiness is very much connected to creativity and it's impossible to find happy, lazy people, okay? I, I never found, found any. Lazy people are not very uh, prone to be happy. The happiest people that I met, and I think you too, are the people that are very creative in their lives. And the third thing is about giving. And that's also coming from that research from Bristol University. So let us start with the secret of, secrets of happiness. And, and let, we'll start, of course, with the reading of the Zohar, Parashat Sab, verse 1. Zot Torah Ta'ola, Rabbi Shimon Patach Ve'amar, Tzidkatcha Karei El, Mishpatecha Te'om Rabba, Haika Okim Nalei Ve'itmar, Translation. Rabbi Shimon opened and said, uh, is giving us a verse from uh, Psalms 36. Uh, and he continues, that verse, your righteousness is the mountains of God, and your laws are deep uh, ravine. But what's the inner meaning of that? And we learned, come and see, says Rabbi Shimon. The offering, which is called Ola, Ola means in Hebrew ascending. So from the words, the names of the uh, offerings, we can understand about the deep meaning behind it. And we spoke about it last week. First of all, we said the, the, the general name for it is Korban. And Korban can be seen as being a victim or a sacrifice the moment you are in that place that you sacrifice and you're a victim, you can never be happy. However, the Zohar says you have to look at that word from another meaning of the word korban. It's from the letters kufresh bet karov, close. It's about getting close, getting close to God, getting close to the realms 
above. The, the offering we're talking about is called Ola. Ola means ascending, which means the purpose of the offering is to ascend, to ascend for us, the people below, that we live in a physical, materialistic realm, in a physical lim limited body, and all of this physical reality has a very um, debilitating effect because the moment you are, we are, as humans, focused only on the physical, it seems to be, as our sages are teaching us, hayesh lo mane otse maatai. You have 100, you want 200. You have 200, you want 400. It's never satiating, it's never enough. Neither money or food or anything that you can enjoy on the physical realm. The moment you are focused on enjoying on the physical realm only, you are basically uh, doomed. Why? This is never going to satisfy you. Only for a little bit. So uh, let us see how it continues. So why the offering is called Ola? This Ola, Zohi Ma'ala, is ascending and connecting Knesset Israel Lemala, connecting us to the divine spirit, to the Shekhinah of above. What does it mean above? Above, meaningly on a higher dimension of perception, reality, and consciousness. Above the physical senses limitation. That, and, and the attachment in the, to the upper world, to be all of it, one. What does it mean? The above and the below. In one tie, in one connection with happiness. So what is the secret of happiness? So we starting with the first thing is a human being is a soul within the body. Now, a human being, when you see a human being acting, okay, uh, a human goes to work, um, doing his job or her job, okay? That human being is, is a body, but there is a soul within the body. The moment that soul is gone, when we are asleep or when we are dead, then the body cannot do anything. The body is just a covering. The body is just has no power to do things on itself. We have to realize that it's a soul that enters a body and is acting through the body. However, the body allows us to create stuff in this world, but there's a price. The body is heavy. The body is dense. The body has a very low frequency since we are born. It says in the in the, in Parashat Bereshit, just in the beginning of Genesis, and it says that the inclination of the human heart is evil from birth. The heart, not the soul. So the body is like a weight drawing us down. The offerings, they are the antidote, antidote to that weight, which is elevation, ascension. So first thing, first thing, first secret for happiness is that the human being must, according to the Zohar, have a calling, Vaika, that's the name of the whole book, must follow the calling, I am a spiritual soul, a spiritual entity, experiencing a physical life within a physical body. And my destination, my calling, my goal is to reconnect with the eternal divine. I need to have that as a goal, as a mission, 
in order to be happy. Why? As we said again, research is, is showing when a person is just focused on the physical senses fulfillment, the joy of, let's say, drinking alcohol or drugs, sugar, any kinds of other foods, it's sex, all of that stuff that is only physical, this is very limited. You cannot really achieve happiness. That research of Bristol University said that one of the conditions to achieve happiness must be a daily meditation. Why? Because a daily meditation is basically kind of a, you setting yourself up daily that there is a reality beyond your physical existence. That your brain, your mind, your thoughts, your emotions, your goals are focused on something that is outside the physical existence of the body only. And that what is the Zoe is saying. The attachment, the oneness with the upper world is not something that, that will be achieved after we die, like some religions preached to us. This is something that you have to achieve daily in order to achieve happiness. Now, that needs to be done on a daily basis. So, creating a daily meditation or following, training, exercising, a daily meditation in which we raise, ascend our focal point to the world to come, to a reality of endless light and love and positivity and energy, this is a must. And uh, of course, there is a meditation that we created. You, create, uh, you can find the link uh, in the uh, bottom of the information of this uh, uh, YouTube uh, 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 movie or uh, uh, clip. So you'll see it below. You, and you, or you can find there's so many other meditations, but you need to create a meditation which allows you to focus on connecting, uniting with the world above. This is a mission, this is a goal, that in order to be happy, you need to generate that ability and to maintain it. Like that uh, Bristol University research says, Going to the uh, gym once or twice won't make you fit. You will need to exercise daily. Uh, you need to continue working out and you need to invest in it. Same thing in your ability to achieve happiness. So, the Zohar continues. So when it says Zoto Ataola, this is the uh, this is the uh, law of the offering of ascension ola. Okay, it is about connecting female and male together. What is female and male together? The divine is the the male aspect of reality, and the mundane is the female aspect of reality. The same way that you have body soul relationships, the soul is the male because the soul gives. The body, power, life, everything. The body is the recipient. This is this is the female side. So if the body is trying to be, you no, know, I created myself, and my existence is independent of the soul, then it's like you get the, your body dried up, and then you see so many people cynical as they grow older, envy, angry, upset bitter, the body is drying up because the connection to the soul is drying up and is not activated. And the result is people are miserable. So that is the whole story of uniting the male and the female, which means the divine and the mundane, the soul and the body, the light and the vessel. It's all about that. To ascend with love, to the upper world, 
And that is the real, this is the first message that you must be focused on. You must to apply that, exercise that. It's not just a belief. Because when people say, I believe, it means, you know, I it's comfortable for me to assume. No, the word in Hebrew is emuna, which is beyond faith. It's about connection. And connection is the name of the game. Connecting your body and your mind and your brain and your thoughts to the spiritual dimension of your soul and connecting the soul upwards because then the soul becomes the vessel for the spiritual godly light, divine light. So then the Zohar continues. Uh, I'll skip some of it. As I said, I was reading verse 1 in the Zohar, Perusha Sulam of Parashat Tzav. If you have that, um, you can read it over there. Uh, but it, go it goes on. And that's what we mostly... Uh... Okay. And there's another thing oh, before that. Okay, verse 11. Rabbi Elazar is asking Rabbi Shimon, his father, and he's saying, We're talking about, as we said, the, the key words are connection and connection to the upper world, the world to come. And again, as many religions say, but the world to come is something that will come after you die, which is a big uh, myth. What we're learning from here, it's not, the, it's not the world to come. It's a wrong translation. In Hebrew, it's olam haba. And olam haba means the world is, that is coming, which means that connection to the, world, the, the upper world is coming to us all the time. We just need to welcome it. How? Open up, train ourselves, raise our consciousness, ascend. How do we do that? So he's saying the connection, the, the attachment of the will of the priest and the Levites and the Israelites, how far can it go? Which means when we bring the offerings, and as we studied last week, we don't have a physical temple right now. And our sages taught us that instead, instead of physical offerings, we have the words of our mouth, prayers. And the prayers replace the offering. So how far, how far, how high can we reach? How far can we reach? How high can we go? Verse 12. So Rabbi Shimon answered, we learned that the attachment, the connection, when you really raise your desires, your will, when you really focus on connecting, desiring to connect to the highest levels and you raise them and you train yourself doing that, you can go up to the endless. The endless, the source of all creation where everything is simply endless bliss, light, energy, and of course, you call that happiness. Because each connection, each unification, and unification is a very another key word. Unification, connection, we said, is a key word. We are here to connect, to connect, to the realm above the physical senses. That's our calling. When we don't do that, we start to wilt. And that's why, as I said, as people grow up, they age bitterly. And they try everything. They try food. They try all of that stuff. And they become more and more negative about life because they are not working in developing their connection. The other word is yichud. Yichud is unification, which means I'm here to unify the, the consciousness or the uh, frequency 
of the spiritual world of the above with the, the physical reality and make them one. Our job as humans, the same way that the human soul got into a body, give it life and activate it and move it forward, same way, our job is to bring the world to come, the world that is coming, to bring that sanctity, holiness, spirituality, power, and inject it into our physical reality. This is the real message of the Torah. That's a real basic message of the calling of every human being. So when we do, so the word is yichud, unification, okay? And shlemut, shlemut from the word shalem, shalom, wholeness, completion. Or oh, the only way human life can be complete is when you inject the spiritual divine dimension into the physical realm. And that's a training of a lifetime, daily. And all of this, and all of this will be treasured and hidden because when you experience that, you cannot explain that to anyone. You can deliver the message, the feeling that you have through your, action, your actions. For instance, some musicians were really successful about it. You listen to the music, and it connects you to somewhere beyond art, painting, whatever, or just you see the way a human being is behaving and you feel something, there's something above going uh, uh, projected through that person. That means that that person is doing his or her job. And that's everybody's job. And this is in a <clears throat> treasured, hidden dimension that cannot be perceived or understood. This is not something you understand. It's something that you experience, but it has nothing to do with understanding because understanding means uh, bringing it down to words, sentences, and so on, and divinity in such a high level cannot be uh, locked or uh, limited into words. Some people have the ability, which means all the holy uh, writings, like the Torah and the Zohar and the, you know, the Mishnah. You have people who had that gift that they could somehow uh, encapsulate divinity into words, you read the words and it's not the words, it's something beyond that, that you experience having that, saying it. This is the endless that cannot be understood, cannot be finite, <clears throat> cannot be a beginning, cannot be the end. Okay, because it's beyond and above the scale. So when you make the effort daily to connect to that place as a goal, as a life goal, as a life mission, you reach that place, which is not a place, but it's the beginning of everything. And that's where everything is being emanating from, all the lights of the emanations of the Sefiot, of the Tree of Life, is, eman is being projected, emanated from that place, which is beyond the scale, beyond um, knowledge, beyond anything of a physical explanation or description. Still, this is where life flows to everything, and the source is beyond the scale of human consciousness. And then <clears throat> verse 13. Love routine, love nehovim, 
לאו בצינין בהו אין סוף. כל אילי נהורין ובצינין תליין להתקיימה בהו. ולא קיימה לי דבקה. מאן דידע ולא ידע? לאו יהו אלא ראו אילאה סתימאה דחוסתימין אין. No wills, no desires, no lights, no candles in the endless. All of these lights and candles, they are only in the first emanation of the world of emanation. Olam Atzilut. They are dependent in the endless, however they are not the endless. The endless gives life, life into it. But that cannot be perceived by human logic. So if you're trying just to understand everything, uh, you, you're looking in the wrong place. It's like the drunk man looking for his wallet under, under the only uh, street light in the village. And when you ask him, where did you lose the wallet? He says, oh, far away. So why are you looking over here? Because here I can see. You're looking for your happiness in the realm of, of a <clears throat> common knowledge An explanation is not there. So this is going up. So the desire is to ascend to that place. But at least that you know there is a place like this, where every life force is flowing from. Now, so why, why this life force cannot fill us up? I want. Where is it? I just want it. I just made a wish. Why it doesn't work like this? Why can't you say, okay, light, endless light, fill me up? There's another issue. And that is verse 15. ועל דעת יבת היי סטרה אחרה בידה דיכנה. נכתיב צו את אהרון ואת בניו לאמור, רזה הכה. דהר קימנה, לי צא ולעבודה זרה. והכה התייבת לי לתוקדה ומחשבה רעה, ולעברה לה מיגו קודשה. בהי ראותה דסלקה לעילה. בהי תננה ותרבין די תוקנה. בגין התעברה מן קודשה, והעצה ברשותה יוקיימה. להפרשה לה מן קודשה, מיגו היי קורבנה, והיא תימה, צא ובני ישראל, הכי נמי, דהה ברשותה יוקיימה. כל זימנה דאבדי ראותה דמיירי הון, Translation. And so here the Zohar relates to the word sub commandment. Where he says, command Aaron and his sons. And there's a secret over here. Because when the word command is related, says the Zohar, the Talmud says also, to idol worshiping. How do you define idol worshiping? We, most of us don't really understand idol worshiping, thank God, because we never experienced the real, people don't really know, most people. Uh, what does it mean? But uh, our sages explain that anger is, the feeling of anger is kind of close to idol worshiping. How do you define anger? Anger fills you up with a lot of energy. With a false sense of power, false sense of being right, doing the right thing, you have justification. Uh, anger gives you that feeling that you are stronger for that moment. However, anger debilitates you. Because after you get the high, it's a buy. Same thing like drugs and many other things. So it's a false sense of power. You're really fulfilled with power, but this power is negative. So, and that means the dark side. And the dark side has an ability to give you a sense of power. And now, with Parashat Sav about the offerings, the Zohar says over here, We can, we have an opportunity to learn how to burn that evil thought. Okay, what does it mean? Uh, 
it's not just that people are after happiness. They're also running away from the pain of depression and terrible, bad, uh, debilitating thoughts, which means there's a presence, a reality, a force, a power that when we feed our dark side, and every human being has a dark side, it accumulates. The same way that we said that daily meditation and prayer and actions of, of positivity and so on, they accumulate, but same thing on the dark side. When we fall into anger, when we fall into uh, all kinds of, how do we call it, uh, desires that are negative and selfish, that creates, and that's also according to the uh, Bristol University research, it creates terrible thoughts that stop us from being happy. So these thoughts could be repetitive thoughts, obsessive compulsive thoughts of uh, negativity, of hatred, of anger, accusation, blame, shame, guilt, stuff like this. What the Zohar is, are you saying? It is an accumulating energy and it's a force of its own of the dark side. And that force needs to be removed so we can access positivity and experience happiness. And now, how do we burn those thoughts? That's, that's a question of the Zohar. How do we remove those dark energies that debilitate us, that block us from our goal, from our mission, which is being creatures of light and happiness. Because we know that a human being is not created to be not happy. How do we know? Very simple. When a human being is depressed, upset, angry, hateful, there's a very immediate price. And the price is, first of all, the immune system, the most important system in our body, starts to fall apart. If that continues longer, other systems in the body fall apart too. If it becomes a chronic situation, we know today that most of the diseases human beings experience now around the world could be related this way or another to autoimmune uh, diseases, deficiency. What is autoimmune deficiency? It's when we allow negative emotions to take over and we feed those emotions, focus on those emotions, we stuck, imprisoned in those emotions, the body is starting to deteriorate physically and within years that can create illness and death. This is the, and it's always coming from a lack of happiness and a state of mind, that's how medicine is describing it, of despair, hopelessness, and dark, the whole world is dark, pessimism. In order to remove that, you have to burn those negative emotions. How do you burn them? How do you burn them? So the Zohar is saying something amazing. That's the command. You're commanded to force it upon your body. How? So uh, the Zohar is saying, uh, we we'll, we'll go to verse 24. And the Zohar says, when a person is coming to sin, and that means hatred is a sin, one of the biggest, if not the biggest, anger is a sin, idol worshiping, all kinds of passions that we allow ourselves to be taken over by, which means addictions, addictive, obsessive emotions. When we do that, we create burning it's called a person is burning himself with the flame of the evil inclination 
that in return will create inflammations in the blood system, in the body system, in tissues around along the body. And here we're coming to autoimmune kind of deficiencies. So how do you eliminate that? You need to create the fire that will burn those negative forces. And the secret is when we, there's a repetitive uh, ex, um, verse over here, which is the eternal fire on the altar. And that verse, uh, you can find it in uh, Leviticus chapter 6, verse 6. Esh tamid tukad al hamizbeach lo An eternal fire will be uh, maintained on the altar. It will never be put off. Which means you're not allowed to, to allow that fire to simply be distinguished. How? You have to feed it all the time. Rabbi Azakuria, the Arizal, is saying you should say that verse seven times every morning in order to connect to that eternal fire that you have to light within yourself. However, whenever you feel that you're starting to be depressed, repeat this verse seven times at least, if not more. Uh, you can say it also in English. Okay, you can find, as I said, Leviticus 6, 6, chapter 6, verse 6. An eternal fire will be burned on the altar, will never put off. But you have also to do it. How do you do it? So the Ramchal, Rabbi Moses Chaim Lutzato, of the uh, great Kabbalist of the 18th century in Italy, although he's buried in Israel, uh, he, the last years of his life he spent over here, uh, he said, you know, this is like simple coaching. You want to have that fire, you have to fake it till you make it, which means you want to get up and to do something, do it quick, like you are physically excited, like people are excited. People are on a flame of excitement. But I didn't feel like that's a commandment. Force it upon your body. Every time you do something, you do it like you're really excited doing it. Even simple, dull uh, stuff in your life that are not really interesting. Why? Because as you force it, you command your body to do things as though you are excited and happy, sooner or later, that fire will be, you're just maintaining the fire. Why am I doing it? Because I want to connect to the eternal fire. So if you move fast, you do things fast, you do things like you're excited, sooner or later you're going to see it happening. The most simple way to do it today is you wake up in the morning and part of your daily ritual, simply put happy music and then go jogging, running, do errands in the house, washing dishes, everything, and especially dancing with this, with this uh, happy music. And today, everybody can do that because everybody has a phone. You can put music on the phone and simply do it. In the beginning, somebody is depressed and he's dancing with a happy music. How do you feel? You feel that you are forcing yourself. You feel that you are like, this is like, why am I doing? I feel so silly. Don't worry. You feel silly. But then after a few minutes, science is teaching us. When you are dancing to happy music, even though you don't feel happy, your brain starts to secrete serotonins, endorphins, all of these drugs but it's self-made, homemade. Your brain is making them. And after a while, you start to feel the excitement in your arteries, in your vein. You have to do it on a daily basis. You must do it on a daily basis because this is the way you're training yourself. I remember when I was younger, you know, you have, you're making so many mistakes and you have dark, 
emotions and dark feelings. And sometimes it's so heavy, like a heavy, dark blanket. But then you force yourself to dance like you're happy. And after a while, you realize that it can, it will take you maybe 15 minutes, an hour. But as the time goes by and you do it on a regular basis, you it's going to take less time till it's almost not going to happen. So that's exactly as we're saying. What what an, another thing that they research uh, in the Bristol University is saying, be busy focusing on doing good for others. Remember being a creator, the image of the creator, one of the three aspects. So is giving. So when we are forcing ourselves to dance, when we're forcing ourselves to act like we are happy, we're basically creating independence and creativity at the same time. Okay? But what does it mean? Uh, my body is heavy. I feel terrible, dark thoughts and emotions. I don't let that control me. I work really hard to create the magic of happiness within me. How? That I force my body to dance. I force myself to get excited. I more force myself to be happy and to do great, to do stuff that, you know, my body doesn't want it, but does my soul want to be happy? Does my soul want to connect to my calling? Yes. Imagine that and force your body to dance and to be happy. And what you do at that moment, you, you burn the negative energy you accumulated since you've been a kid. And you know, when we are kids, when we're young, we do a lot of stuff. And if, even when we get older, we do a lot of stuff that creates negative energy. When we get angry and we stay angry for hours, thinking how right we are and how wrong they are. You, you know, being angry about others is like drinking poison and thinking that somebody else will die out of it. No, it kills ourselves. That's poison. So this is what we're saying. So this is the art of creating happiness. Another thing that creates happiness, also according to the uh, Bristol University research, thankfulness. When we have a morning and evening or daily prayers in which we thank God for everything that, uh, the, the everything we have, which means count your blessings. When we simply focus on that, and that means you have the Hebrew daily prayers, or you can just daily be thankful every time you see something. You can thank for the blue sky. You can thank for the flowers flowering. You can thank for anything you appreciate around. And if you create that appreciation and focal point on what can I be thankful for, can I be thankful for being able to see, hear, smell, touch, whatever I have, I have to be thankful for. Thankfulness, this is not just Bristol University research. This is a known fact scientifically. When people are thankful, they are happier. When people are always complaining, this is really a disease. Why? You can't be a complaining human being and a happy human being at the same time. It's impossible. So, yes, we have to give up complaining. It's not easy. It's an addiction for most of us, especially in our society, that we have so much, like never in history. Human beings were so rich, so, so full of everything. Food, housing. Humanity has never been so pampered like today. And there was never an era people are so, so much into the religion of complaining. You have to disassociate yourself, unsubscribe from that network of complaining. You find yourself watching TV, news, any kind of consuming of information that makes you complain, 
unsubscribe. You have to get out of that because that's a terrible, a terrible disease. Because again, you cannot be complaining happily. It's impossible. So you have to stop complaining about anything. Just if you see something that needs to be fixed, so make an offer, do everything possible to fix, but do not complain because that has a terrible effect of creating the dark fire and blocking your happiness. So basically, I think we covered uh, most of the, most of the uh, uh, rules to become happy. And also, as we said, giving to others, being busy with caring for others, this is very, very important to get out of the debilitating, uh, obsessive, negative thoughts. This is one thing that the research also found, and it's very important. So when people are, you know, people are really generous, giving, and they have a mission to give to others, to make others happy. Those people have higher chances to be happy people, especially given that they're not thinking they're sacrificing their time, energy, money, whatever skills. They are really being elevating, ascending. Every time we do something good to others, we have to remember Rabbi Ashlag, the founder of the uh, modern Kabbalah movement, said when you give to others, when you share with others, when you make other people happy, and it's not just something you do on your spare time. It's even more than that. You have a skill. You are a plumber, electrician. You are a psychologist. When you give all yourself to make other people happy by solving their problems, and you do it because this is the way to elevate yourself to the high. This is your daily offerings. When you do that, Rabbi Eshok says, you get so much light. You get so much power. You get so much reward that that will push you to give in even more and to extend your ability to be happy. So when we're helping other people, either with money or just as a volunteer work, doesn't matter. When we do it and we do it not as, as a victim, sacrificing his energy, whatever. No, I'm doing it as a mission because this is my way to ascend to the high because one of the major ways to unite with the upper worlds is to vibrate, loving, caring, giving unconditionally. What does it mean unconditionally? My happiness cannot be conditioned by other people's reactions. Which means I gave, I gave service to somebody because it's my job or because I volunteered to do it. And they, they don't appreciate, they complain. That's their problem. I did it to connect to the high above. I did it to raise myself to the endless. And when I do that, when that's my meditation, as it says in the book of Leviticus, love others as you love yourself, I am God. Why do you love others? Because that's a way to connect to the power of God. So happiness to everybody. And we wish uh, a great week and start your daily routine of meditation, giving to others, not as a victim, giving because that's a way to raise yourself, being excited about everything, even if you don't feel like Uh all of these simply follow that daily and you will see that as the weeks and then the months and the years pass by, your ability to experience happiness will be extended as a skill, as a fitness. It's not just daily training to get physically shape, in shape. You need to be in happy shape. Thank you, everybody. And good luck for everyone in your journey.